and EGM and Animage show up at the tower. They start with Fortune's End onto Loda, and then he runs forward, and, and Darkseer, seeing, seeing just an Animage, is like, instantly, I have to surge away. But Animage will blink onto the Darkseer, Fortune's End will follow him and hit the Darkseer and potentially purge off Ion Shell or, or, uh, or Surge. Stay where you are, Tusker. The maledicting, they actually use Fortune's End to prep for RK and EGM to go to work. Is that enough? If they get at least one more attack in here, he should be dead. And there's the one more attack. It's a malediction. Oh, oh, you bet it! It's gonna be first blood going the way of the witch doctor of RK malediction. It's a real thing. I mean, I I love Oracle, but uh, I read those changes and I was like, Oracle's still gonna probably be. I don't think he's OP, they're going he's going to be really strong here. There's light, lose this flame card, and we go again! S4 gonna skew a light back oh in the no! shot! Fimi actually pushed him further away! Bulldog TP as well, he doesn't have a sprout of Valble, and they don't have- Oh, okay, yeah they do, they do now! They actually throw out the damage, Nature's Prophet will find the kill, and they turn one into two! And that Aghanims is now freshly up for the Nature's Prophet. A lot of pushing from Loader on the top lane. He's still got the TP scroll, so he can come back. And this will be some significant damage into the tier 2 tower, and there's the answer to one of our questions. So it is the Rod of Aoi coming in for EGM, but Light, he's gone all the way in. They found Admiral Bulldog oh, no. with the Ice Blast to connect. We're actually going to have the lag in the middle of the fight as well. Thank you very much. Oh, they get a two-man RP on the two carries too, but oh, oh my god, the vacuum! Four-man vacuum wall! Oh, they catch them all. With the Mana Void return though, the Ember Spirit is going to go down and Alliance trying to fight underneath their own tier 4 towers. For Red's going to get popped out by the Oracle and now, after the fight has ended, we will go back to our normal viewing of uh, 60 frames per second as MVP. So a 3 for 2 trade-off was the end thing. And that is only because Darkseer hits such a huge vacuum wall combination. But MP he's in trouble. still be caught. The Furion's up in 20 seconds. He doesn't have anything to jump to, and now oh, that Rod of Atos. Atos goes to work again. So MP jumps over to EGM, gets oh, two so crits! EGM barely surviving. He's healing himself up as quick as he possibly can and stays out of the vision of Diana MP. But he'll come back Diana. over. He's got another Fortune's End in two seconds, but it looks like Loda might be able to finish the job. Oracle, in fact, will kill Secure. Well, not AGM. Um, the Phantom Assassin inside the Radiant Jungle, and now they're moving five more. Febby out of position, and S4 blinks off cooldown, so he can jump up. He was looking for the blink that into Skewer. Not going to get it perfect, because the Shards come seconds. in. They do get the Searing Chains off as they oh, split no. up the fight. Dupu, he's in a real trouble as he'll actually go down to the Anti Mage. They'll keep on going. Another fact there's no wall combo to go with this with time from Forev. And the Paralyzing Cask will fly out, locking the Dice here in for a little bit longer. But it's Light who's really locked in. It doesn't need to drop the Sprout, and then the double kill! It's there for Loda. Prophet managed to catch out the Ember Spirit, but the Mana Void spilled its damage out. So Loda will pick up a double and they'll look to push it even harder. There's a lot of spammable abilities from the Oracle. That's why I'm hesitant about Lincoln's. Forev starts to surge himself forward. I don't know if he's looking for the vac up, up onto a cliffside. Now how many heroes he can also fit on that. But now he'll get the vac into a wall. Doesn't really find the big hit, however. Admiral Bulldog TPs himself in. The snowball's gonna get out of a little extra spill stuns. But Hake gets destroyed by MP. One crit to rule them all. And now another one to oh, get they the for. They get the RP off. EGM will keep himself alive for the moment. But currently it's a two for one trade off. EGM will finally get popped by the Phantom Assassin. And in a 3 for 1 trade, MVP comes out on top, and instantly you're into the split push from Bulldog. Like, the bonus is just so big for the Animage, he could just destroy all of MVP so quickly. And that's really, that's the play right now for Alliance. Oh, goodbye Magnus. Oh, Jesus. MP's just gone ham, he's gone into the base, he's going after Arke, the Ghost Scepter again. Buying him a little bit of space for Rev. There's a full channel right now from EGM, so Forever's locked in position for the moment, and already S4 bought back. They find the Phantom Assassin on the side, but you don't want to commit big abilities for her. She's still got that Aegis of the Immortal. MP did dive in a bit too deep, and Loda did manage to beat out QO in that bottom lane fight. That 1v1. Now they're going to catch MP with a skewer back. That's the bigger one, but EGM! Oh, God! The crit hurts him so hard, they get the Sprout down, so MP has to stay where he is for now. 
But only for now, they follow up with the Hex from Admiral Baldur. The control is there, the Snowball protection, however, is also there. It won't do enough time, however. The Aegis Immortal will still trigger. The RP is up for S4, but what does he want to do apart from get hit by the Ice Blast? That's not what he wants to do, it's just what's happened. But it's bottom lane, where Loda, after winning that battle up against the Ember Spirit, will have Admiral Bulldog TP in. They're going to go for it, and they've taken out the Melee Rex. Admiral Bulldog, the TP out in time, MP actually gets the mini stun from the MKP, cancelling the TP out of Bulldog. He'll go down, the Sprout TP out will not be there in time. Andy Mage does catch out the Tusk guys, is retreating out, also dropping the gem while he does it. Yeah, but EGM you, will get it. You have to look behind you whenever you play up against Alliance. Last that one lane of Rax though, it's it's just like all the descriptions that people use against Alliance about rats and, and basically cutting down the infrastructure from the inside out, like uh, termites or something. They found light, can they get the control on him however? The spirit's moving but it's just so damn slow and they're gonna find the kill! Again QO being caught out, 80 seconds on the sideline. Oh, Alliance are just going to try and go for the end game now. They, might they just can go catch for a an kill. extra hero. Admiral Bulldog goes for the Sprout. An ancient apparition, you can search him all you want. They've come through the Sprout, so they're away on that front. But then moving forward, Loader cleans up the Create Wave for Rev's Ghost Scepter will protect him. He still doesn't have this Scythe of Vice of his. But we have MP with a double damage rune. Moves forward. Loader does not want to be part of this one. The RP from S4! Followed up by the Death Ward. The damage is big and the damage is good. MVP will lose to Tuscar as well as PA down for the count. For Rev, they use the Sprout to get the vision on him. S4 still a little bit too far away. But remember what they came here for. The bottom lane's already going to push in. They don't need the mid wave to turn off the backdoor regeneration. So the buyback has to come out from the Phantom Assassin. For Rev, the back wall catching out four heroes. A lot of very quick in the blink, however. So only three really affected. RK, successful TP out. You're going to have, you know, two heroes bottom and, and three heroes top or something. And that's just going to make you get caught out by the Nature's Prophet. You're starting now, to see the, the effect of the Ember Spirit nerf right now. MVP don't know what's happening instead of Roshan. They've got the Spirit in there, but they don't know when they can jump. So Light, he just makes the play. <laughs> Loader oh. is ready to be there for him. The Slide of Fissurian Chains will go to work. And another Spirit thrown back in again as they jump forward. Witch Doctor! Arcade's down. S4, however, another big double RP. And Animage will cleave through them. MP surviving for the moment, but then they just turn in for the Mana Void, EGM, Light can't even kill off the bloody Oracle support. They just have to keep going here. Another slide of fist, finally Loader, the big spree ended by QO. He gets both Oracle as well as Anti Mage. Huge amounts of money coming the way of MVP, and with Bulldog being isolated, it's a triple kill for QO, and they can take Roshan, which Alliance already softened up for them. The mid lane, uh, like, the tier 4 towers are currently under siege, but it doesn't matter if they can just grab this Roshan. That'll Still though, they're in a pretty decent position. If you just look at um, the lane equilibrium across the map, MVP can just actually force this fight mid and won't trade anything immediately. Bulldog's still going to push out the top lane. Oh, EGM. He got four staff down. Protection is going to be there, however, in light. Be very careful. Even with the Aegis Immortal, maybe when that Ice Blast does arrive, EGM he doesn't even get chilled by it. In fact, it misses every single player from the Alliance. But the Ember Spirit still has more than enough damage to chop up EGM. And he has buyback, so the Oracle can come back into this engagement. Yeah, it's really tough to see as uh, an observer and a player how much more damage you need to put into that Oracle to make sure he actually dies when the Oracle uh, ultimate pops. Alright, MVP. Let's, uh, let's they, see. they gotta go for the tier 3s now because Furion is... <laughs> I mean, at least QO, as long as he doesn't get caught, but he, I don't think he can because of the Lincolns. Furion doesn't have an ability S4. to pop it and still hit sight. He got hexed. Forever went to the front lines and Ben P instantly gets the crit. Oh, oh. it drops so fast from QO's attack. The Death Ward is out, however, but not for long enough. They don't do enough damage to find a kill, so MVP fighting inside the Alliance base under the T4 Towers with the RP from S4. Loader swinging, but can he get the ding? No, he can't. The return damage is there. Another slide of fist. QO is going to town right now. MP setting his lines as well. They keep the Rapier up. But they still haven't taken out the racks. They still don't have the advantage. The bottom lane is pushing in. Loads on the front lines. I'm waiting for Bulldog just to backdoor this damn thing. But right now, he's defending the front lines. They see the spirit. Light. It's QO. He's back to the world. It's for to skewer himself away. Loader. Lucky not to get perma bashed. The tier 4 towers are still dying. So is the mid racks. Is this the time, Bulldog? Do you have the confidence? Do the people buy the BTs and come uh, the back? The drone is the exposed now. Yeah, there it is. 
VTs, it's on the Animate. They're going He's to commit. Them in. They're actually going to have a crack at this. Dubu is there. Oh, they're going to put the Travel in. They're, they're going straight for the turn. There it is for Lona. He bought the VTs. He's ready to go at MVP. They have to come back to defend. RK, he's the man that's going to hold him here. MP's coming back, but the Fortress is under attack. MP, who can he crit? Who can he kill? Lona's playing up the BKB. Bulldog and Lona, they've done it. Alliance will take the game. They go 2-0 here in the first series. They went balls to the wall. It was and a they trap, Toby. MVP. It was all a trap. The Empire really won. Oh, it was just a trap, man. Oh, God. MVP, they were so focused on the fact that they're like, the, we just won this fight. We got some kills. We forced some buybacks. And they were going for a mid laner racks. And they actually went bottom. They went for the bottom lane of Rax instead of going back to their base. I can't believe they fell into the classic alliance trap. This is why. This is why we said <laughs> this. You think you're pushing for the win, but you're pushing for your loss.